the, uh, there are a few things I want to say before I introduce the senator. The first is um, New Jersey, New Jersey's federal delegation has really been, over the years, one of the strongest delegations in the nation in terms of uh, caring about issues related to the education of our people and higher education uh, in particular. Over the years, uh, the delegation has been on that subject uh, on behalf of the state students. And I have to say that uh, I've been around for a long time now, and I have had time to watch uh, Senator Menendez and Congressman Pascrell work, not over the last few weeks or the last year or the last two years, but for years on the issue of advocating for better federal policies in regard to education and on the, on the topic of what the students of New Jersey need. Uh, they have been unbelievable partners in this, consistent, persistent, always, always on the topic, no matter what else is going on, this never lost the agenda. So uh, on behalf of all of the students of New Jersey, I, uh, I have to express enormous gratitude. We owe you a debt of gratitude for that. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is, uh, at Montclair State University, our, our goal is to provide high quality education, really high quality education, and to make sure that students are capable of accessing that education no matter what the circumstances of their family life. So the point is provide the best and then make sure any student is able to access the best uh, even if they don't come from uh, economic circumstances that make that easy. Now, in order to do that in an environment where state resources for public higher education are quite constrained, uh, actually, uh, as you look across the nation, it means that we have had to work over the years to do our absolute best to keep tuition as low as possible, which we have done in the circumstances, and to limit uh, the debt that our students have to take on in order to be able to attend college. No student, no student should have to mortgage their future to get a higher education. Not in this century, not in this country. It should not happen. That benefit of higher education is for the students, yes, but much more than that, it is absolutely critical to the well-being of our nation that we educate our population. So I feel, as you may uh, hear, a little bit strongly about this issue. I am, again, incredibly grateful that Senator Menendez has taken on uh, the task of helping to push forward uh, President Biden's effort to address the debt issue, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome him. Well, good morning. Uh, it's uh, moments like these that I am reminded of the refrain that April showers bring May flowers. So we will celebrate it in, in that possibility. Thank you, uh, Dr. Cole, uh, for uh, hosting us today. Thank you for your extraordinary uh, leadership of one of the finest higher education institutions we have uh, in our state at Montclair State University. I'm thrilled to be here with my good friend and colleague, Congressman Bill Pascrell, uh, who helped champion the provisions that I authored in the Senate in the House of Representatives as a member of the Ways and Means Committee. 
Um, and likewise, I'm glad to see one of New Jersey's greatest consumer advocates today, Phyllis Salo Kay with New Jersey Citizen Action. Thank you, Phyllis, for being here, as well as a couple of students, uh, Jasmine Metellus and Roberto Cabanas, who are going to speak to you about what it would mean to them. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, I, before I, I go directly to this topic, let me just say, as new variants of COVID-19 spread across America, it's imperative that we not let our guard down that we continue to wear masks, that we socially distance, uh, that we do all of the things we have been told in the public health reign uh, so that we can finally defeat uh, this pandemic. Uh, as more opportunities avail themselves of people getting infected, the, vi the virus mutates and it becomes stronger. So we can't let our guard down even though we have a record number of immunizations taking place. We're in a race against this new strain of coronavirus. But fortunately, since the passage of the American Rescue Plan, the United States has been able to deliver record-breaking numbers of vaccines. And this legislation is delivering real relief to millions of families throughout New Jersey and the nation. There are $1,400 direct payments, expanded child care and earned income tax credits, housing assistance for struggling renters and homeowners, and there's billions of dollars helping schools and colleges reopen safely. But today, we're here to talk about one of the lesser known provisions of the law, one that has the potential to provide even greater relief to millions of Americans and fuel our economic recovery. I was proud to author the Student Loan Tax Relief Act, and fought hard alongside with the Senator Elizabeth Warren to include it in the American Rescue Plan. And as I said, we had a great champion in Bill Pasquarell in the House. Because of its passage and now signed into law, borrowers who qualify for debt forgiveness are now protected from huge surplus, surplus, um, excuse me, surp surprise tax bills. Until now, most Forgiven student debt was considered income. Just imagine qualifying to have $30,000 in student debt forgiven and then having the IRS come after you for nearly $7,000 in owed taxes. It made no sense. And it makes even less sense in the middle of a pandemic when so many are hurting. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, forgiven student debt will now be tax-free until 2026, saving the average borrower about $2,200 in taxes for every $10,000 of forgiven student loans. Even better, by passing this bill, Democrats have set the stage for President Biden to take bold action to free millions of Americans from crushing student loan debt and jumpstart our economic recovery. Today we're calling on President Biden to use his authority to forgive up to $50,000 in student loan debt. For many Americans, and especially people of color, crippling student loan debt has turned the dream of a college education into a financial nightmare that haunts them for decades. According to LendingTree, here in New Jersey, there are an estimated 1.3 million borrowers holding 48.8 billion dollars in public and private student loan debt with an average balance of more than $33,000. Nationwide, 40 million people owe $1.6 trillion in student loans and for many it's simply insurmountable. The pandemic may have exacerbated this crisis, but it has been decades in the making. For far too long, incomes have failed to keep pace with the soaring costs not just of education, but also health care, housing, child care, and other basic living expenses. When you are barely keeping your head above water, it is a hell of a lot harder to make a dent in your student loan principal. Meanwhile, federal investments in college affordability have failed to keep pace with rising tuition bills. You know, before I was the highest ranking Latino in the United States Congress, I was a poor kid from Union City, the first in my family to go to college. 
When I graduated from St. Peter's University in 1976, a Pell Grant covered about 79%, 79% of the annual cost of attending a four-year college. But these days, Pell Grants cover just about 29% of low-income students' college costs. That's a huge difference, 50% difference. We're not investing the way we used to in our young people. And the nation needs, in order to be competitive globally and to continue to lead the world and its economy, among the best and the brightest that we have ever had. So it's no surprise that these days getting a higher education means getting buried by higher and higher mountains of student loan debt. Today, more than 9 million borrowers are in default. And just like any crisis, student debt disproportionately impacts minority communities. Within six years of starting college, 32% of African American borrowers and 20% of Latino borrowers defaulted on their loans compared to just 13% of their white counterparts. Forgiving student debt would free millions of Americans from a financial burden that is holding them back. Consider this, here in New Jersey, the average student loan bill is $310 a month, and for many borrowers, it's even more. I'm talking about four or $500 a month on top of all their other bills. Just imagine what citizens could do if some or all of that debt was forgiven. Maybe it's finally buying your first home. Maybe it's a car that you need to be able to get to work. Maybe it's currently uh, thinking about what you're doing in your life and starting your own small business. Maybe it's saying yes to your spouse or partner, let's have a baby because we can afford a family now. So here's the bottom line. Forgiving student loan debt will unleash a new wave of consumer spending throughout our economy. And the good news is that President Biden does not need Congress to do it. Section 432A of the Higher Education Act of 1965 already gives him the authority to cancel student debt. And with the American Rescue Plan, now the law of the land, we no longer have to worry about slamming borrowers with surprise taxes on their forgiven debt. I believe President Biden wants to be a bold, transformative president. And he literally has the power to transform the lives of millions of Americans drowning in student debt, especially in poor, low-income, and minority communities. He should use it. And we are continuing to press him in the days and months ahead. Uh, that's why the provision that we authored into law uh, is a huge incentive, not only a relief not to get hit with huge tax bills when you have debt forgiven, uh, but also ultimately to incentivize the president to do this. I'm thrilled to see that the president has asked the Secretary of Education uh, to give him a memo as it relates to the authorities that he has, we believe he has those authorities, and it is my hope that the Secretary of Education will advise him so. With that, let me introduce my colleague, a tremendous champion, as I've said, uh, in the House of Representatives on this issue, uh, member of the Ways and Means Committee, uh, Congressman Bill Pesquero. Madam President, good sounds good. Thank you all for coming today on this beautiful day in New Jersey. We'll be going back to Washington later and I'm sure it's as gorgeous down here. I'm delighted to be back on this beautiful campus. When this was in my district, I, was, I lived here sometimes. It's a great place to be. <laughs> what? Yes. Part of it, anyway. <laughs> Montclair's not mine anymore. 
It wasn't before either. We split it up. Always, Montclair's always got two or three congressmen. Uh, the Pascual Gomez Menendez bill, HR 1564, excluded the full or partial forgiveness of any college loan between December 31st, 2020 and January 1st, 2026 from a borrower's income. Uh, the relief provided by the bill applies to public, private, and institutional loans. A family of four that earns $100,000 per year and has a $50,000 in college loans forgiven could receive more than 10,000 in federal tax savings under this legislation. While I do not currently represent Little Falls and Montclair, this crown jewel university always holds a special place in my heart. I want to thank President Cole and Montclair State's wonderful administration for welcoming us today. And I want to thank Bob Menendez for being my legislative partner, especially for student loan relief. Bob and I learned in the Jersey legislature when we worked together back when. We learned that once you get your hands around an issue, don't let it go and don't let it stand between second and third base. You got to bring it home. This has not been an easy year. Our community knows that better than just anybody else. The death toll of our nation is tragic. After 1919, our nation had to come to grips with a world war and a pandemic. So too well, and so too will we have to face a cultural and emotional reckoning. For our students, your burden has been very heavy. You've been robbed of one year of your lives and your short time on campus. Your wait for life is resume and is compounded by the anxiety for what is on the horizon. But the challenges that lie ahead are not insurmountable. And the federal government has a responsibility to help the students navigate this world. You carry a burden, we see it, and I'm working to ensure you are not forgotten. And I couldn't have a better partner than Senator Menendez. During the pandemic, our work has been guided by one overriding impulse, urgency, a word not known in the Congress of the United States. Urgency to defeat this virus, urgency to get our nation up and moving again, urgency to protect our neighbors who need help, and the urgency to lift up those of us whose lives have been indefinitely paused. The Congress is already acting. New Jersey's only member of the House of Representatives Committee, I use my position as chairman of the Oversight Subcommittee to create a fair tax system. That means lending a hand to those who need it most, which includes our students in this country. In New Jersey, over one million borrowers hold nearly 50 billion in student loan debt. The individual average is an astonishing $33,000. Nationwide, more than 43 million Americans hold a combined 1.6 trillion. And Bob, that number, when you mentioned it before, it does something to me. I know we're dealing in trillions now. When I was going to school, way back when. The nuns didn't want me to use the word trillion. You know, the question was, what does a trillion mean? Well, we're not going to get to that. We're only into the billions. That's it. When you say 1.6 trillion, it rolls off your lips. The weight has been made even heavier by the current economic crisis. 
I made student loan forgiveness a priority since I heard the tragic story of Christopher Breisky over a decade ago. Christopher suffered a fatal traumatic brain injury while he was a student at Rutgers University. He was tragically in a coma for two years. After he passed away, his parents were responsible for his tremendous student debt. We worked hard with lenders to provide the relief and to ensure future parents understood their responsibility, responsibility when you co-sign a debt alone. While the Bryskis were granted the relief they saw, they still had no pay, they still had to pay taxes for the relief that they received. They paid taxes on the money that was necessary in their relationship to their wonderful son. It shouldn't be this way. Students should not be saddled with debts that take a lifetime to pay back or taxed when that loan is forgiven. This year, Senator Menendez and I, along with Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, introduced a bill that will make any student loan debt forgiveness tax-free. Thanks to Senator Menendez's dogged efforts in the upper chamber, our, our provision was added to President Biden's American Rescue Plan. Our bill was signed into law last month to give President Biden added flexibility to address the student loan crisis and to ensure students and their parents are not burdened by the IRS. President Biden has promised strong action on behalf of our nation's students. His administration is reviewing all his authority and the new power the Congress gave him. He's a man of his word, and I eagerly await his plans. Since education is the key to your futures and the bedrock of all civilization, no one wants to pursue an education and better themselves should be saddled with debts for the next, the rest of their lives. The students of Montclair State are the future of our nation. I am confident the world you inherit will be a good one. But when you look at the question of how many people do you know that have student loans which go into the stratosphere, you, you took you take a look at it, and you look at the record and the data. When many colleges, unlike unlike Montclair State, that runs a, a an honest shop here, having looked at it myself, but I mean, some of these colleges are making deals with these financial institutions, and that's the next thing I'm going after as a chairman of oversight in, in a Ways and Means Committee. And when you learn that some of these students are paying up to 8% interest, there's something wrong here. And we're going to do something about it. And of course we're fighting on the other front of the forgiveness of the loan, and that'll work itself out. So I want to say I'm honored to be here I worked on many projects with Phyllis. How many projects? For many years. Uh, and our students here with loan and debt issues. I'm honored to be here this morning. I'd rather not be in the rain. That's the story of my life if you want to get something done. Thank you all. I thank the media for showing up today too. Because it's the same whether you have, I have. God bless you. Thank you, Susan, for hosting this. Thank you, Bob, as a great partner. Thank you very much. And now I will well, I'm going to introduce Phyllis. Oh, okay. I'd like to introduce, as our next speaker, the student loan borrower, Jasmine Metellus. Jasmine. What?
Oh, Phyllis, I'm sorry. Are you going to introduce them? She told me we were going to introduce them. Whatever you want. Oh, one. Phyllis is going to speak next? Oh, I just was going to do that, but they told me not. Thank you. Thank you very much. You won't. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the director of the New Jersey Citizen Action Executive, who's probably done more good for the, this state than anybody I know, and we worked on many, many projects, and she's got me into a lot of trouble during the years, but it's good trouble. Now I'd like to introduce my good friend, Director Phyllis Salo K. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Menendez and Congressman Pascrell, for inviting me to join you today to talk about the importance of ending the student debt crisis. And thank you to the president of the college for hosting it. Student debt is now second only to mortgage debt in the United States. Higher education is no longer a sure pathway to a good career or to secure financial futures. Sadly, millions of Americans end up stuck with student loan debt they will never be able to pay back. Some have payments so large that we call them homeless mortgages. About 1.2 million New Jersey residents, that's one in six adults, collectively owe close to $50 billion in federal and private student loans. This was not sustainable before COVID, let alone in the aftermath of the current economic crisis. We meet these student borrowers every day at New Jersey Citizen Action. Our housing counselors hear about student debt from people whose hopes of buying homes are dashed because they have so much student debt, or they have co-sign loans for their children or grandchildren. Our financial coaches hear about student debt from people who come to Citizen Action who want to establish credit, fix their credit, and to save money to pay down their enormous student debt. Our coaching staff recently surveyed 50 people who are student loan borrowers who have come to our organization. And we found that 47 respondents owe between three and $230,000 in student loans. Half or 25 of the respondents owe more than 50% in student loans. 18 owe more than 70, 12 more than 100, and three owe $200,000 or more. For seven respondents, student debt is 100% of their total debt. And for 29 student, uh, student uh, borrows, um, it's 80% of more th of their debt. 35 of these borrowers are African American 35 of these borrowers are African Americans and 46 of the 47 respondents are women. We have allowed the student debt crisis to get to the point where a college education can ruin their financial lives. COVID-19 has caused even more economic hardship for student loan borrowers. And it's time to fix this problem and cancel student debt in a meaningful way. And we have two of our best representatives sitting next to me who are going to do that or help us do that. The cost, and fi the cost of uh, financing post-secondary education in this country are unjust and disproportionately challenging for black and brown students and their families. Without systemic change to education financing, Access to affordable higher education and career training will continue to plummet and leave millions with insurmountable debt. If career training, we want, we want there to be a competitive workforce, a solid inclusive middle class and a strong economy, we need student debt cancellation and reform right now. Citizen Action thanks Senator Menendez and Congressman Pascrell for ensuring that all student debt relief will be tax-free. 
We stand with them and all members of Congress in urging President Biden to cancel up to $50,000 in federal student loans. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll hear now from Jasmine uh, Metellus. I'm Jasmine Metellus. I'm currently a senior here at Montclair State University and I'll be graduating this May with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with a concentration in Marketing and a minor in International Studies. Throughout my time here at MSU, I have been involved in about 15 different organizations, which include being the Vice President of the Haitian Student Association, a peer educator for the Women's Center, and also I was on the search committee for this Vice President of Student Development and Campus Life and many more. Throughout my time here as well, I was able to do seven internships, which include a social media internship at, so at Media Planet, and I was also a special events intern for Jumpstart. As I'm finishing up my college experience, I had to take out loans to support this journey. Currently, as of 2020, according to Investopedia, 1.57 trillion is the amount of student loan debt that is outstanding in the United States. So let's take a step back and realize what I just said. Because of my financial situation, loans were the solution to this issue. Sorry. Okay. I was able to have the opportunities to have as such as today because of loans. But I also know not everyone is in the same place as I am. And that's why we're here today to talk about loan forgiveness. Education should be accessible to everyone no matter where you go. But because of the circumstances that we're in, college can be very inaccessible to many students. Having loans put students on such a strong financial hold because once we graduate, we're accumulating interest on top of the debt that we're taking out in undergrad and also grad. It's difficult to find a job that is sustainable enough to generate enough income to pay back the loans because the debt is much higher than an entry level salary. And that actually limits us from generating our own kind of wealth, our own kind of wealth which may look like investing into properties, buying homes, building good credit, creating our own businesses, and so many more. As a first generation Haitian American woman from a low income area, Irvington, New Jersey, where only 18% obtain a bachelor's degree. I am part of that 18% this coming May. Due to, the financial, due to the lack of the financial literacy, the resources that are around us can't even assist us to understand how student debt works. First gen students have to navigate a world to succeed in an economy that wasn't designed for us. The power of loan forgiveness would help narrow the racial wealth gap and help students in a better place instead of deciding between finances and education where they can coexist inside each other. First-gen students and students of color take the risk to become the breadwinners of their families and create a different life by attending college. After graduating college, these students are left with so much debt that it hinders their ability to pursue a second degree such as graduate school. Pursuing college leaves stu students in a standing financial, financially lower than those that did not choose to attend college. All in all, loan forgiveness would be a relief for many. So let's help create the leaders for today for a better future. I want to thank my parents, Luma Matelis and Marie Matelis, and my sister, Lumaine Matelis, and to my friends that have became family. Let's do loan forgiveness. Thank you. I need that crowd to follow me. <laughs> Got your own uh, champions there. Excellent presentation, Jasmine. Very poised. And uh, now um, another student loan bar, Roberto Cabanos.
How you doing? Yes, you did. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Roberto Cabanas. I'm the field director for New Jersey Communities United. Um, we are a membership-based organization uh, across the state of New Jersey and mainly communities of color in Camden, Patterson, and Newark. Not surprisingly, student debt is a major issue for our members, and so today I'm here, I'm here on behalf of our student debt committee uh, with New Jersey Communities United. I want to thank Senator Menendez and Congressman Pascrell for their leadership to end the student debt crisis, a highly gendered and racial issue. Women hold two-thirds of all student debt. Black borrower, borrowers pay significantly more the same degrees as white borrowers. And black women specifically hold the highest amount of student debt. I want to highlight the experiences of a few of our members who work in early childhood. Amina Hilton is an early child care worker a specialist who has nearly $120,000 in student debt. She was recently forced out of her child care industry because she could no longer afford the rent on her home where she provided child care for working class families in Newark. Instead of using her degrees to provide early child care education, she has been forced into the gig economy, uh, delivering food and picking up occasional opportunities to consult and evaluate child care programs. Marilyn Kirby earned her degree in education and became a teacher in Passaic County. She pursued her degree with the promise that her student debt would be canceled after teaching in her school district. A year and a half after she was told her student debt would be forgiven, she discovered that she, that was no longer the case. Instead, she found herself to be in default. As a result, her credit was negatively impacted, her interest rates increased, her car insurance increased, her homeowner's insurance went up, Marilyn cannot even co-sign student loans for her, for her daughter to now attend college. Nicole Lancaster is an early childhood education a specialist teaching preschool at a large community service organization in Essex County after earning her master's degree right here at Montclair State University. Nicole had $40,000 in student loan debt. For the last decade, she has paid her student loans every month on time. She has calculated that she has paid a total of $29,000 towards her student loan, loan debt, but her principal balance has only decreased by $35,000. A mere $5,000 reduction after nearly a decade of paying six times that amount toward her student debt. And myself, I graduated Rutgers University, served my community. I was the president of student government at Rutgers Newark. Um, started working in nonprofit in 2005. Everyone always tells us we have to give back to our community and do the right thing, and I can't even afford uh, to buy a home in the city of Newark in a place that I love and grew up and live with my family or start a family. We have to remember that millennials, folks in my generation, we had to live through, uh, we were graduating college when the war was happening in Iraq. We had to live through the recession, right? When things finally started to get together um, and the economy started to take off, here we are with COVID back in another disaster. Um, and we're just, all we're doing is trying to get ahead, and there's been so many barriers for our generation to start families um, and to live the American dream that doesn't seem in reach anymore for us. The lives of our members are shaped by student loans. They believed they would help them obtain stable econ an economic future. Instead, they found out that the loans are lifelong long burden or lifelong sentences. As Nicole Lancaster calls it, it's a ball and chain. I want to again thank Senator Menendez for his leadership on this issue and for the opportunity to speak here today. I hope that our stories and our voices inspire President Biden to act on this crisis immediately by canceling all federal student loan debt. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me thank all of our speakers, particularly Jasmine and Roberto. They made very poignant and vivid reminders of why uh, this issue is real, so important, so powerful. I'm just going to say a few words in Spanish because I have to, and Congressman Pascual and I both have to catch trains back to Washington. Uh, simplemente hoy estamos eh, eh, celebrando el acomplecimiento de que actualmente ahora cuando la deuda estudiantil de un estudiante eh, es perdonado pues no está sujeto a impuestos antes de la ley si se le perdonaba cualquier parte de la deuda de un estudiante ese se consideraba ingreso y ese ingreso era sujeto a impuestos así que un estudiante al fin cuando recibió el alivio se encontraba con 7 mil dólares de impuestos que tenían que pagar. La ley que el congresista Pascual y yo escribimos y que es ahora ley, actualmente elimina, elimina cualquier posibilidad de tener un impuesto sobre la deuda que es perdonada. Y también abre la puerta para crear la posibilidad que el presidente Biden perdone hasta 50 mil dólares de la deuda de todos los estudiantes. Tenemos más de 1.6 trillones de dólares en deuda estudiantil nacionalmente. Eso no permite a un estudiante poder progresar, no le permita comprar su primera casa, no le permita empezar una familia, no le permita actualmente quizá empezar un nuevo negocio. Esto fue un estímulo económico enorme para nuestro país y un alivio para millones de estudiantes en su vida. Y por eso estamos celebrando la primera parte de lo que queremos lograr. No impuestos en cualquier parte de una deuda que sea perdonada. Pero ahora le instigamos al presidente Biden que al fin use sus poderes abajo de la ley que existe hoy en día para perdonar hasta 50 mil dólares. With that, I thank you all. If there are any questions from the press, we will follow up. Uh, Congressman Pascal and I to our offices. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Cohen. Thank you to all the participants. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm sorry.